Well, his name is uh, Voigt. Uh, he's a billionaire who, for all of his life, he was uh, searching for something uh, more. He's very uh, ungrateful character. He's the guy who was never happy with no matter how much he had, he was always searching for some new um, experience, for some new um, feeling, uh, but talking more about the sexual and more like uh, bodily experiences. And he feels tired of everything. He feels like that he needs something more. And that's when in his life he comes across uh, somebody's research about the box and he finds the box and he believes that this is the ultimate holy grail of, of uh, otherworldly experiences. It's something that, that he can actually renew himself and do something that nobody have ever done before him. And of course, he doesn't know what's he getting himself into and he really ends up having a bad end of the deal. And then we catch him uh, in kind of like the movie starts kind of really uh, heating up when we realize that uh, he is trying to open the box again because he's trying to get outside of this predicament that he is in. So he's basically is going to commit the same mistake, but hoping for the better results. He's trying to outsmart these Cenobites and he builds this mansion and everything around it. He builds the cage for them, but is it going to be successful or not? We'll see that uh, in the movie. So the character that I'm playing in the film is Serena. Serena is a woman that was working for Voight and she was providing him with whatever his needs were um, until she maybe realized um, the evil side of him that maybe she couldn't cope with. At that time, she turned her back to him and then she got sick and she went into this nursing home until the box came back to her because some younger people were searching uh, the story, I mean, Odessa, basically, like that. Riley, the main character of the movie, was searching for what this box was all about, and she found a relationship between her name and Voight's name. She went after her, and when she saw that box, basically, she understood that they are really in danger, and she knew the story of the box, and she knew what the configurations of the box were. So she decided to sacrifice herself for one of them. And she um, had to face all the Cenobites. Right, I, I was not really very familiar with the Hellraisers before because I always rejected horror. I never wanted to watch it because I was getting sick from it like sick physically, basically, like I wouldn't be able to cope really with the fear and like the physicality of it after. And I would stay like any, anything that would make me frightened would stay with me for ages after. And it like would make my life really horrible. Like I wouldn't sleep, I would have nightmares. And so like, I decided, that, you know, like this is not for me. And that was that really, you, anybody could tell me the best things about one horror movie still I would never ever go to see it and if I ever try I think I would sit and like while watching I realize where I would end up so I would stop so that even would get me into that fear just the thought of being frightened would already start the fear in me right so it wasn't really something that I was uh, able to I mean physically I wasn't able to do it so it everything went fine I've just like lived all my life with that until I as an actor I had the desire to do one because I thought like that would be really fun you know I, I didn't think it would help me maybe get over it or anything I just didn't use it as a therapy you know process but I I wanted to do it for the fun of doing it and really, honestly, one month after I spoke about it to my um, uh, representation, so I just got the offer and it was so much fun because when I read it, it felt like, wow, what a great idea. But I remember talking to David and I told him, 
I never watched anything before. I don't think I will watch anything. I will watch anything. And I don't think even I'll watch our movie. I'll do it, but I don't think I'll watch it. You know, I was there really. I just couldn't help it. So like I did the movie, but I got so um, excited about the work and the process of it that I just decided to watch it because I almost had all the, you know, like all the elements were still in my mind. So like, I know that it was fabricated, you know, for, for that. So for me, it was easier to watch something of being part of the doing of it. Well, honestly, I've never been a huge fan of horror movies, but uh, when, when I was younger, when I was a teenager, my local video store, you know, there was still VHS tapes. We found this, treasure trove of uh, Hellraiser and I went in the one that was I believe it was the fourth one when half the story is actually happening in space that's why I originally took it from the shelf because I thought it was a science fiction and then I saw the one and then I realized this is franchise you know they actually have three already made and that's how I saw the one two and three and uh what really attracted me to uh, David's film when we've been discussing, David was mentioning that we're going to be kind of like making almost a little homage to the original one, to the first one. There's not going to be a lot of computer animation, CGI. We're going to try to do as much as possible uh, with practical elements, you know, with uh, when we have chains flying, you know, they're not CGI chains. They're actually real chains. When you see Cenobites and everything on them, they're not uh, lenses are in people's eyes and the costumes and all, all those prosthetics and stuff. So it looks so realistic for actors while on set and also your eye when you see when you see it in the movie you realize and you recognize that it's it's a real thing there is very very small amounts of cgi and uh i i love that it reminded it's going to remind you on that original old movie when they did that kind of uh visual effects that was really great i mean one of the most enjoyable processes of of uh work I had was working with David. I just, because I was so unsure about like the horror aspect of in, in the business, just he made it sound so great and so much fun because basically he, he was so prepared and he was so meticulous and he was so like after the details and he was so prepared to everything that, you know, he just like went with 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 my character explaining almost every little detail every little thing making every little detail become like so important to the story that it made the whole process of work with him just like much more enjoyable and really great fun really great fun and i told him i said david whenever you want i'm there again i'm ready to go uh a lot of what he um, said working with David was when you come on the set, when you talk to the guy, you you realize he's prepared. He knows what he's doing. And it's always for an actor, it's a good sign because you it's a lot about trusting the director, trusting his vision. Because if you can't, if he's asking you to do something that in the moment you think it might be ridiculous, it might be too much, you need to rely on him that he's not going to embarrass you, that you're going to actually, that this part that maybe is not good, but it's good for the uh, for the other part of the scene, that he's going to cut it out and he's going to not let you expose there like a raw nerve. And that was that was the case with David. You know, he, you, you, you were just able to trust him. And now when I saw the film, it was exactly what we've been talking about, what we've been discussing. And uh, he just he just has this calm presence on set that creates beautiful work environment. But in the same time, he's a nerve. He's kind of like, you know, he's pushing everybody to give everything from themselves. And uh, it's actually a perfect work environment. So I, I was I was very, very happy to work with him. 